Uh, greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility where we treat people and we do not treat diagnoses. Uh, so today, I'm Jim Ellermeyer and I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... I'm Kelsey. I'm a PA student from the University of Mount Union. On my right? I'm Kim Capelli. I'm a PA student uh, from Seton Hill University. Okay, so tell me, uh, do you watch the news? Not really, no. Okay, do you watch the news? Do you keep up on things? When I have time, yeah. Okay, so uh, what those things, what the news generates, is how much good news do you hear? Not very much. How much good news do you generally hear in a newspaper or on a television? Almost none. Almost none, almost none. So what does that sometimes leave you with, a sense of? Um, sense of fear. Sadness. Mm -hmm. So, what would you what would you say fear is? Um, well, being scared. Mm -hmm. um, being and afraid. Calming and not a not good feeling. Right, right. So, fear. A lot of fear is based on not being able to be in control. Right. And you discussed control earlier. Yeah. In fact, you might just say a little bit more about that. Um, well, I think a way that fear manifests itself in me is a sense of no control. Um, I guess I'm afraid of not having control over the future, uh, just over my life in general. So. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah. sure. And that's a fear of what you're saying. Again, the baseline there is not having control. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what would one of your, what would one of your fears be, Kelsey? Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Say a little bit more about that. Um, well, especially now with being in school, mm -hmm. um, but quite a lot of time and effort into into mm -hmm. that and to to fail would would I would not be happy with absolutely that. I don't want to do that. so sometimes as uh, well as everyone probably knows about there by now from the 12 step world and Bill Wilson suggested in uh, the book that fear is a corroding thread that goes throughout people's lives so can fear is fear always a bad thing Kelsey no no give me an example when fear would be a would be a good thing um you know as as Kelsey said fear of failure um you know, if, if you're that afraid to fail something, fear might be a motivating factor to not fail or to work as hard as you can to avoid, you know, that. Um, so that in that way, I think it can Absolutely. be a positive thing. Absolutely. And also fear can can be a uh, self-preservation tactic. Mm -hmm. not, could you give us an example of when that, when that could work? Um, in chaos. In chaos. Um, like any sort of tragedy, an earthquake, something like that, mm -hmm. you're gonna, you're, you're not gonna stay where you're at. You're, you're, you're gonna be afraid, and you're gonna run, get away from. Right, from then, then like that's that. self-preservation, is it not? Mm -hmm. Not absolutely. However, what happens, Kim, sometimes is that fear becomes an overriding factor in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about anxiety and we talk about worry, what is underlying all that? Fear. Fear, absolutely. And it seems to be a lot of people seem to want to generate fear. Do they not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In our in our particular world, uh, fear is a much greater motivator than actual physical violence, is it not? So many people that have panic attacks, Kim, uh, the fear is that the, the actual fear of having one is much worse than the, the panic attack itself. Mm -hmm. Living in that type of, you know, people who live in anxiety and worry, can mm -hmm. Absolutely. So unfortunately, what this world sometimes does is, is it fosters, it fosters fear and anxiety. And it fosters fear, living a life of fear. People who are afraid to go out of their homes. People who insist that they be armed all the time. People, so so what do we do? Uh, what do we do? What, what's one of the first things that we teach here at Seclair to be able to be in touch and be able to safely manage uh, emotions? Um, well, the, one of the first things is, is you need to label the emotion. Um, kind of, you know, be aware of it, give it a name. Where, where we, we give the emotion a name, we sit back and we accurately describe the situation where we're in, do we not? Mm -hmm. So when, we, when we're accurately able to label and describe an emotion, then we're able to better deal with it, are we not? So it's just like when you, if you ever had a dog or an animal. If you don't give it a name, you're not that particularly attached to it, are you? Mm -hmm. So why do, why do we give things names? Then we believe we own them, right? Mm -hmm. So... What I'm asking you, let's own that fear. Own it and accept it and, and, and understand where it's coming from. And the first then we look, then we look, remember, fear is a behavior. 
So we look back and we look what's driving that behavior. Okay? What's driving that behavior? So there's so many things going on in the world that unfortunately we hear about instantaneously today. And my hope is that everyone out there could possibly be in recovery from the news and the what I would call fear mongers. So remember uh, back in World War II, uh, Franklin Roosevelt was president of the United States and he used to have these fireside chats on the radio. And one of the things that, because everybody in the world was very, very, very afraid of uh, what was going to happen. So what, what was the quote that Franklin Roosevelt used? Do you remember it, Kelsey? The only thing to fear is fear itself. The only thing to fear is fear itself. When fear becomes that corroding thread, when fear becomes that factor. So there's a lot of people in the world who create fear. And so how do we counteract that? So when you're, in, when you're having fear, Kim, do you feel like it's dark? Do you feel like there's any light? Um, it's very dark. Yeah, I feel kind of crushed. Fear is a, fear's a dark place at the work we can be into. Mm -hmm. And when you're in a dark room, what do you generally do? What do you do if you want to find something in there? Well, if I really want to find something, you need to turn on a light. You if need, you don't, then you just fumble around. Yes, you need to turn on a light. So sometimes when we're, when we're living in fear, we're in the dark, are we not? Mm -hmm. And we're fumbling through. So when we're talking about turning on the light, so when we're talking about this world, fear, fear is a lot of negativity, is it not? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what we have is we have catastrophic thinking catastrophic thinking or that's that's when we fear the worst do you ever you ever get that way i'm sure are you sure so then that and fear can be that factor too so how do we counteract that fear how do we counteract the negativity and the fear that's generated all around us throughout the life throughout the world um well we need to to be a light to other people absolutely so how 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 can we be a light i know that we can't we can't completely eradicate the darkness. However, what can you do on our, on, our, on your own particular basis on an everyday basis? Being positive and acts of random kindness. Acts of what? What would acts of ran, random kindness be? Um, you know, complimenting someone who you don't know. Um, just keep trying to keep a positive attitude. You know, things like that. Mm -hmm. Random acts of kindness, opening a, a door for a person, mm -hmm. saying a kind word. Perhaps throwing a quarter in that person's who's who's up saying that they're homeless, and it's not. What's your intention? We don't know whether they're going to do whatever that. But you, what's your intention is to help them, right? Mm -hmm. So, for, so for every kind thing that we do, generates positivity through in the world, does it not? Mm -hmm. We create positivity, and when we're creating positivity, what we're doing is we're dealing with fear in a constructive way. Okay, so I know that there's a lot of fear in the world much much of it and a lot of it is fear that is unfounded did you ever have unfounded fears kim yeah mm -hmm. how do you what do you do about unfounded fears um well i try to to just take a step back and figure out why i actually feel this way kind of to get to the root of the issue um and then i try to think about concrete facts of why i might be scared and usually with those unfounded fears, I don't find any real logical reasons to be scared. Um, that kind of helps me process, I think, through some of it. So what we're talking about is the ability to step back mm -hmm. and become the observer behind this thinker, as it is the thinker that's creating the fear, is it not? Yes, it is. Okay, and many of these fears are, are completely, completely unfounded. Mm -hmm. And again, when there's legitimate cause for concern and fear, then it can become a motivating factor. So all this, all this fear-based things that we see in the world, everyone, everyone that's out there that, that's living in fear, they're, they're locking, they have to lock their doors all the time, and they're, they're constantly wary and they're looking out. Okay. So what is a, what is a life filled with fear? What would, what would you say a life filled with fear would be like, Kim? Um, I think it'd be a very restricted life, very kind of sad, depressed life. Um, not a lot of adventure or, or even fun really if you're you know filled with fear every day so what we ask people to do kelsey is replace that that mind of fear gradually with a mind of awareness 
to become a mind of awareness, to be to be open to possibilities. And again, what's the best way to get out of fear? What's the best way to get out of depression? What's the best way to establish some self-identity, some self-concept, and some self-esteem? Is to number one is to compliment others and do those random acts of kindness to to spread that light. Mm -hmm. So imagine imagine if just the three of us would do three or four just small acts of kindness a day. What we want to do is generate. We want to generate some positivity. Okay. We forget it. Forget it. We're we're going to cease fighting anyone or anything. We're going to cease fighting anyone or anything. So what we want to do is create a positivity, and we're going to stop. We're going to stop attacking. We're going to stop attacking the fear. We're going to stop attacking these motions. And because they are you, are they not? Mm -hmm. They're with you right now. Yeah. Okay. So. Sometimes you're afraid. Would you be? Would you introduce yourself as fear? Absolutely not. I'm fear. <laughs> would you introduce yourself as anxiety? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the idea is that we, in one of our podcasts, we talk about hitting the reset button. Did we not? Yep. So when when we find ourselves becoming fearful, and this takes some practices to be able to step back. Okay. Step back, and understand, analyze it, accurately label and describe it. Take that moment to center yourself, and how do we f effectively do with that? So that's my challenge out there for everyone today. I'm going to challenge everyone to create some positivity in the world when, er, when there seems to be so much negativity. And sometimes we just respond to negativity with fear, do we not? We respond to negativity with fear. And when we're, when we're in fear, then we're in darkness. When we're in fear, when we're, we're in darkness. So when we talk about religion, when we talk about spirituality, all we're doing is we're talking about connecting with something greater than yourself. We're talking about something greater than yourself. So, and that would be the light. And what I'm going to ask you, Miss Kelsey, is to reflect the light. Do you think you could reflect the light? Okay, okay. reflect the light into that darkness of fear. Okay, and when you, when you, let's say when you were a child and you were afraid of the dark, and someone came in, oh, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, there's nothing here. Well, when someone comes in, and they turn the light on, and they open all the doors, and they get under the bed, and they show you, they actually, they, they take the time to say, okay, let's identify and label what's going on in this room. Let's identify and label it. And sometimes we need a helper. We need a we need a helper, do we not? Mm -hmm. And sometimes that that's where we're talking about a spiritual connection. Okay? As that spiritual connection, there's no fear there. There's no fear there. And my suggestion is to connect yourself with, with like minded people and to share your fears. When you're afraid, have a have a trusted confidant, have a friend that you can share those fears with. Okay? And remember when we bring those fears out. When we bring those fears out, then it, then they're no longer in us, and we're able to act label and identify them. As I've said many times before, fear is like vampires. When you then when they come out into the light, then they dissolve. Okay. So, any uh, final thoughts from you, Miss Kim? No, I don't think so. Okay, and Miss uh, Kelsey? No. Nope. Okay, so my challenge out there for everyone today is to bring, how can you bring some positivity into this light? How can you bring some light into the darkness? Uh, perhaps the, when you're at a cashier, perhaps you could compliment that person. They have a hard job. When somebody does something well, compliment them. Tell them how much you appreciate that. Open a, open a door for someone. Be kind to another. Perhaps we can't all feed the world. We can't all shed the light to everybody, but we can do our part. We can we can contribute to a food bank. We can volunteer and do something do something positive to create a positive atmosphere of love and not hide behind our doors. Not hide behind our doors in fear. So as always, we'll give you a free prescription, fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Unplug your television. I suggest everyone be in recovery from the news and take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, I ask you all to fish without bait, to live a life without expectations. So until then, both of my colleagues and I, we wish you well. Mm -hmm.